tidy ho my peeps okay you guys are getting two videos in one evening is it still evening yes for about an hour and 15 minutes um <laughs> i continue to clean i continue to go through stuff and pack stuff up and label it and put it in the pile that says finished product um, but i ran across some stuff i wanted to show you because i had been asked if i would make some of this and you know when I elicited your suggestions a couple of people came back with some of these suggestions um one you didn't come up back with but I still wanted to share with you is something that I made a bunch of about four years ago I guess just I sold every one I had with the exception of these that are personalized and let me show you this is a little wall sign. It's got a glue gun string hanging from it there. Let me get the glue gun booger off. That's freaking me out. Okay. Does it have any more? Not too bad. All right. This says Madison, obviously. It would be for presumably a little girl named Madison. And uh, I'll bring it up a little bit closer. Um, that is, a, those are book pages. Uh, that are on cardstock. It's all glittery with glittery edges. Then I made the um, little charms that spell out the name Madison. And I used my crocodile tool and I put the little eyelets on. I love the eyelets. They're purple. I think they're so cute. And just finished it off with flowers on either end. And you would put you know, hooks or a little decorative push pins or something in your wall or your bulletin board and hang this up. So I made a lot of these that look very similar to this and in other styles as well. But um, this was something that I made quite a few of and I sold a lot of. And they said they had words on them. Um, that was the year I was doing the word of the year. And I think my word of the year that year was impressario. Empress, like a queen, only an empress, which is a higher rank, as far as I'm concerned. And then Ario on the back, Impresario, because that's what I felt like that year. I felt like I was kind of reinventing myself with some, with some ideas about a new business, which has taken me four years to get to. And <clears throat> I was going to just get out there and make stuff and sell it. So I wanted to be an Impresario. So... I thought about that and I thought, you know, words on signs, that's popular. So I made a bunch of these. And they said everything, love, peace, bliss, dream, uh, faith, believe, all of those inspirational words that were and still are popular. Okay, so I'm going to be doing more of more signs like this than they will be in, you know, a lot of different styles. But this very popular seller. So... And I only have three left. One says Madison, which I showed you. One says Cheyenne. <coughs> and I use that name because I live up in the foothills. A lot of ag kids and FFA. FFA? Yeah. Future Farmers of America um, kids. And their parents have named them things like Sierra, Cheyenne, Dakota, um, you know, all these kind of Western names. So I figured, well, I just might sell one. Didn't sell that. Okay, so now here's the thing that you, someone had asked me about, and I wanted to show you. And it has to do with magnets. I have made tons of magnets. These are some of what I have left over from doing the craft shows, but I wanted to show you. Um, they're small. That is a one inch circle. It has a magnet on the back, and it has a little crown hanging from it, so it's got, you know, a crown theme. Um, I started making this style of magnet in part because I noticed that my refrigerator magnets, a lot of them are real big, and they take up a lot of space on my fridge. So I was thinking... Maybe I'll just make something kind of cute and small where I can, you know, put up a, a piece of paper or whatever, and it's not going to take up, you know, a quarter of the fridge door. So this is what I came up with. And 
Then I did a bunch that were have a Western theme because again, I live in a very Western area. Um, this one says cowgirl. Isn't that cute? With her little six shooter. Of course, you know, the way people are feel about guns these days, I don't know. I guess I could always put a horseshoe on there. But anyhow, here's another cowgirl. Stop. You know, the whole cowboy trope is something that just isn't, um, it isn't part of kids' lives anymore. They don't relate to cow cowboys and Indians. No longer relate to that stuff. So, you know, these are definitely for for people who are old, people who are older, who remember those days, would look at these um, these designs with nostalgia, and that's pretty much who was buying them. You know, women women my age. Um, so, and then I had just a an assortment of different motifs. Let me open up my third bag, and I'll show you. I loved making these. It was really fun. Okay, so. Oh, this has a story. Okay, it's a little cowgirl, right? Let's see, can you see her? There. And her, um, gosh, sorry about the glare. Her uh, tagline is, don't fence me in. Now, my parents tell the story about when I was a little kid and they bought me a, one of those, remember those horses, the big plastic horses on a stand and they were held on with springs and you'd get on this big thing and you'd jump up and down and man, you'd be riding that horse and if you, if you zigged when you were supposed to zag, you'd get launched off that sucker, head would hit the, the brick fireplace mantle and you'd just get up and keep playing, right? Well, <laughs> um, I had one of those and I used to get on it. And I would sing the song, Don't Fence Me In, which is an old Western from, a Western song from decades and decades ago, obviously. And the funny thing is, I was, I was really little when I was doing this. Um, I, I started speaking very, very early. And it would kind of freak my parents out because here's this, you know, 18-month-old child that somehow managed to climb up on this hobby horse that's way too big for her, way too dangerous for her, and I'm jumping like hell singing this song about Don't Fence Me In. So uh, for one of my birthdays, I don't know, maybe I was 45, maybe 50, my mother bought me a pillow. In fact, it's, it's out in Mike's trailer right now. I should go get it. Um, and it says Don't Fence Me In. So that's the story of that. Now, Here's another one. Um, it's got a tea theme. Isn't that cute? Kind of a little French theme with a little teapot. I think that was adorable. Here's one. Oh, I love this one. It's a, a surfer girl theme. Got a surfer girl up there and then this... Uh, uh, there we go. The Charms of Surfer Girl. Um, I did a lot of stuff that had like a Paris theme. Here's your fleur-de-lis and the Eiffel Tower hanging down. Let's see if there's anything else different in here. Oh, then I did some stuff kind of steampunky. Here's an old shoe. Gosh darn it. Here's an old shoe with a key hanging down. What else do I have? Oh, I also did some uh, some animals. Um, I did a bunch of different dog breeds. Here's just a simple um, small one that doesn't have anything hanging down. It's just a little antique, little dog off of an antique valentine. I thought that was cute. So anyhow, um, yeah, is the answer to your question. I've done a lot of little magnets. I'm putting, I probably have about a hundred here in these bags. And I just wanted to show you guys a couple so you'd see that, uh, what that looked like. Um, I, that's just one style, obviously. There are many, many different styles you can make. But I really like these. I'm going to start off with these because they're quite small 
and can be sold very inexpensively. This is a Paris one. Come back. Can you see that with an Eiffel Tower? Okay, that's pretty. So yeah, making progress, working hard. Uh, Grant and I watched, a, we're watching a new British uh, mini series. And I can never remember the name of it. Something about the, a road, I can't remember. When I remember, I'll tell you. But anyway, um, it's very, very good. Um, kind of satirical, funny, set in the 1920s. Um, where, uh, and it's about these, uh, these, ki th these young men who go to Oxford University together. And just the, the stuff, you know, that goes on in their lives. And the women that they meet. And, you know, it's kind of a coming of age. Um, story in a way and I don't know how many seasons it runs but I just really really liked it and the, I know that the title came from a a uh, a poem uh, by some author who I'd never or some poet who I'd never heard of but then poetry is one of my weak areas I just I never got it I just I am so prosaic just naturally that you throw some poetry at me and it just goes right over my head I can't obviously can't remember anything I love this one this one is two Labradors a black and a white Labrador puppy and it says best friends I think that's so cute here's one this came from a a soap label an antique soap label that my mother gave me I photographed it and digitized it and turned it into, um, you know, a little picture that I could put on stuff. And then quick, the last one I'm going to show you, it's also another soap label that my mom gave me. And it has a little hangy thing. In fact, it's the same design. And it's got a little bee on it. I think that's really cute. So, there you go. Just wanted to come back and do an addendum to... Hang on a minute, I'm going to fall out of frame. Uh, just do an addendum to tonight's earlier video. Oh, golly, I have too I have too much stuff lying around. You know when you start knocking stuff off the table that it's it's time to stop and clean up a little bit. I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you what's in my little box. I put things in things, things that really don't go together and they shouldn't be in there, but for some reason, that's where they go and live for a few years. So here's my beautiful little box, my friend. Um, Jenny gave this to me years ago. The first thing I have in it is this adorable, absolutely adorable little girl's dress. Isn't that cute? It's a, mm. it's a, it's an, <laughs> Grant just went, oh, it is sleep. I said, yeah. Okay, he's listening. Um, it is a, it's authentic to the period, I'm guessing, about in the teens, maybe, maybe in the tw 1920s, but I'm thinking more in the teens. And um, back in those days, they would, they used a lot of hooks and eyes and snaps as fasteners, very popular. And also t ties, you know, um, tabs that you would tie to close up a skirt or a pair of pants or, or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. But just, just look at that gorgeous workmanship on the bodice. So beautiful. And I can't tell... Yeah, that's all hand done. And the I think I, I think the term for this is it's either punch work. Um I've also heard it uh called broidery anglaise, English embroidery. Um and where what they do is they'll take a little awl or a little um punch uh, of some kind and they'll poke it through the fabric and then they'll take a few stitches around it and then pull the pull the awl back out and punch it in the next spot and so 
that's how that's one of the ways you would make this embroidery and glaze um, it has some just beautiful features like it has this lovely little thing on the two-part sleeve that sort of it's just a piece of fabric beautifully beautifully sewn and it helps to give the the sleeve some body so I just thought this was neat um, no, I am not going to sell this, and I am not going to cut it up. I am pro It's probably going to end up living in a shadow box or something here in the house. This didn't belong to anybody that I know. Um, it came from a yard sale, and so, yeah. Now, I wanted to show you. I mentioned that my mom had bought me some soap labels. Well, I want to show you. I have the originals right here. Um, she found these at some antique store somewhere. This is uh, Violet Supreme, um, Logansport, Indiana. This one is Cream Gloria, a greaseless vanishing cream, also from Logansport. And these are um, these are originals. This one is Salco Hair Oil, highly perfumed. Oh, you know, I would love that. It was 25 cents. That was probably a lot of money back then. Um, and then another Salco Violet Toilet Water. So, so of course, these are precious. Um, I They've all been photographed and digitized, and um, I will probably frame these and put them up in my house at some point. Um, and then this is just a little calling card, a little handmade calling card. It says, um, Jenna Dawson on the back, written in pencil by some little kid. And then on the front is um, a, a little piece of German scrap that people used to uh, buy or cut out of magazines and they would make their own Valentine's and Christmas cards and scrapbooks and stuff. So this thing is uh, glued to the front. Honey, what does FLT stand for? It's a, I think a fraternal organization. It's on a, oh, here we go. This is on somebody else's I'm going to take this thing off so I can see who it is. Okay. All right. So I took the little piece of scrap off that Jenna Dawson had put on. Um, FLT is a lodge of some kind. L.E. Post, Old Lodge <coughs> something in Ord, Nebraska. So it's a calling card for this person. So that, I don't know, you guys might know what FLT stands for. Something... Lodge, I don't know. Anyway, if anybody knows what what that fraternal organization is, leave it in the comments below. I'd like to know. So anyhow, um, yes, <laughs> I am churning my stuff. You guys ever churn your stuff? You know, you'll pull out all your boxes, and you know, you'll pull things out and make piles on the floor, and you'll start to sort things, and you're starting to get a general idea of where they go, and then it gets late. And you pile them all back in the boxes and shove them back in the closet or under the bed or wherever it was you got them from. You just churn that stuff every once in a while. Well, I've been churning tonight. So I hope uh, I hope I didn't bore you guys with yet another video of me acting, you know, like I'm on speed or something, which I'm not. I'm just, I'm still just going on nervous energy. So, um, yeah. You're going to see a lot of these for the next, until I crash. So hold on. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Bye. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have something else to show you. But before I show it to you, I need to put on tonight's crafting hat. Share that with you. This is my homage to Doris Day. And also to, to Trudy off of Mad Men. She wore a hat like this to uh, to a party and dance with her husband. I just love this thing. I think it's so cool.
I'm not exactly sure how, it should, how you're supposed to wear it. I think like that. I don't think it's supposed to go on back the back of your head or straight up. I think it's supposed to come forward. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe like that. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to show you um, before we say, say our good night, farewell, of either saying, my friend. I wanted to show you this. Um, I love Lawrence Welk. I will love Lawrence Welk till the day I die. I made a ton of these little tags and they're all stuck together. Not permanently, just kind of stuck together. I mean, they, they pull apart without getting all nasty. I made a bunch of these. Um, I was selling them in sets of six. They didn't sell real well, but I thought they would make cute um, price tags on some on some of the items in the store. So, so yeah, I just thought they were kind of neat. Just a little, um, what do you call that? Mod Podge stuff layered together. I started to work on something like that, but I don't like that one. Is there anything in here that's different or interesting? No. I use my um, my little corner punch to make the corners, the cutouts on the corners. I thought that was fun. I don't do a lot of like um, scrapbooking and stuff like that. I, I I've done it, but I don't. Um, I'm not addicted to it like like you need to be if you're going to do it all the time. Um, but I did do enough to um, to learn a few techniques and to, um, you know, to really, really get a kick out of it. I, this is one of the ones I like the best. And it's also one of the simplest. And it's just some... Uh, it is book pages from an Italian English dictionary and then just a little piece of um, doily lace across the front, and that's it. I think that was kind of neat. So anyhow, that's everything I did bring out to show you, and now I am going to go away for real, and I will see you guys tomorrow.